120 miles from the crowds of Salem, Massachusetts, under the towering buildings of Connecticut's capital city. The whispers of trees tell the tales of a dark colonial history. People don't realize this, but Connecticut has a very deep history when it comes to these witch trials. Absolutely. Colonial Connecticut was the first in New England to hang someone as a witch. 45 years before the hysteria in Salem, the Connecticut witch trial started in 1647. The last execution happening 16 years later. 34 people were indicted with witchcraft. Of those, at least 11 were hanged, nine women and two men. But we don't know the true toll due to a lack of records from the accusations, trials and executions. They're very, very scattered. We have fewer records than they do in Salem, which is probably part of the reason why our which trials are lesser known. Yeah. Author and researcher Beth Caruso shows us the history hiding in plain sight, pointing out the patterns to tell the story. And the reason for this, why were these people being hanged? There seems to usually involve sickness, illness, some kind of unexplainable event. A lot of this involved misogyny. According to some speculation, the hangings took place here in the heart of downtown Hartford, outside the meeting house, which stood where the old state house currently is. Another possible location cited by historian William DeLoss Love is right here by the intersection of Albany and Irving about a mile up the road. This is where the Hartford Daily Current photographed an ancient elm tree back in 1930, calling this the scene of the last witch hangings. Family means a lot. I have two daughters. Looking at family photos, the search for answers about the witch trial victims is personal Here's for mine. Susan Bailey. I could not believe that I was actually related to someone who lived in Connecticut, right where I live. A There's DNA ancestry DNA. test revealing her tie to history. Alice Young was my ninth grade grandmother. Alice Young of Windsor. A mother and wife was hanged in 1647, marking the first recorded execution for witchcraft in the American colonies. Apparently there's no record of what the accusations were for her and uh, or any kind of court records other than to say she was hanged. There was an influenza epidemic in the town and Alice Young lived next door to four children who died. So we think that's the reason why she was accused. An undeserved death, now only remembered by a brick, inscribed with Alice's name outside Hartford's ancient burying ground. And we don't know where she was buried or what was done with her body. They would have probably been tossed into a ditch near the hanging site. Centuries later, at the state capitol, on the eve of the 376th anniversary of Alice Young's death, just this past May. And we're voting on House Joint Resolution Number 34, resolution concerning certain witchcraft convictions. Some justice delivered as Connecticut lawmakers passed a resolution absolving those formally convicted and executed of all crimes of witchcraft. I think it does bring a, you know, a measure of comfort to people who uh, have this hanging over their head that they feel bad about what happened to their relatives. It names all the victims. It recognizes the history. Now Caruso continues the push for more recognition, calling for a permanent memorial for the witch trial victims, as well as spaces that share the history. And apply those lessons to present day, whether it's you know, countries around the world where people are being scapegoated, where science or medicine might not be as readily available, or even through social media, witch hunting in that way where people don't know all the facts. Those lessons impossible to bury six feet under. Angelo Bavaro, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.